If you don't know much about art, you might be quick to think, I don't get it. That's art? Or art just isn't for me? But what if I told you that you have an innate, intuitive capacity to understand art? Because the key to getting art requires one thing. Mindfulness. When looking at a work of art, if we practice the principles of mindfulness, presence, awareness, patience, and compassion, we can have a profound, even transcendental experience. In spiritual practices, this mindful exercise is called contemplation. Contemplation is similar to meditation. In meditation, we focus our awareness inwardly to quiet the mind. In contemplation, we are focusing our awareness outwardly along a train of thought. Contemplation is an intuitive process of inquiry to achieve understanding. But for both meditation and contemplation, the principles of mindfulness are the same. When contemplating a work of art, we want to maintain the following. Presence, stay in the moment. If you start to feel your mind wandering, bring your attention back to the art. Awareness, observe your intuitive response to the art. Note the features of the art, the imagery, colors, the shapes, size, texture, and materials. We call these the formal qualities. What emotions, sensations, or concepts do they convey to you? Patience, take your time. People spend as little as 10 seconds looking at a work of art. A meaningful connection to art will probably take longer than that. And lastly, compassion. Be kind to yourself and to the art. You're not stupid if you don't get it, and the art is not bad because you don't like it. If the art doesn't resonate with you, that's okay. As long as you've maintained mindfulness, you still got something out of the encounter. Now I know what you're thinking, but Emily, what about art that's from a different culture than my own? or another time period. How am I supposed to understand the work of art if I don't know the cultural or historical references? Well, this is a good moment to discuss the difference between knowledge and wisdom. Let's look at an example. This is a painting by one of my favorite artists, Ernst Ludwig Kirchner, called Potsdamer Platz from 1914. Nowadays, any Westerner would probably think the figure on the left is a widow, as she is dressed all in black and has the classic veil of a mourning wife. But in 1914, if you went out at night in Berlin, you might think twice about whether she's really a widow, because she could be a prostitute. Prostitutes had learned that in wartime, they could dress as widows who had lost their husbands, and the police would be less likely to harass them out of sympathy for their situation or for fear of offending the widow. The painting's date, 1914, means that Germany would have just entered World War I, so it is likely this is a prostitute. This contextual information is fascinating, isn't it? But ask yourself, do you really need to know she's a prostitute to understand or get the painting? Or do you get the sense of the exciting but eerie and surreal feeling of Berlin nightlife through the formal qualities of the painting? Consider the electric, unreal colors of the scene or the energetic brushwork, which adds a buzzing vitality to the image. Or the flattened, disorienting sense of space that seems to tip the scene towards us. Or the distorted perspective, in which we're eye-level with the woman facing us, but also somehow elevated, hovering over the plaza. All these formal features convey the slightly dangerous thrill of nightlife in Berlin in 1914, even if you don't know about the social history of Germany. And this is the difference between knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge is acquired through investigation, and wisdom through mindful experience. Both aspects of learning are important. Knowledge is powerful, and a book, website, or even museum label about a work of art can be very informative. But I encourage people to start from a mindful experience of art first, 
Then expand your understanding with investigation or ask an art expert like me to weigh in. Now that we've covered what mindful contemplation of art looks like, let's put it to use. Such exercises are best done in person with the art, but online viewing is the next best thing. My online videos begin with a guided meditation, which includes prompts and sounds to activate your senses. The goal is to heighten our awareness and presence so that we are in a mindful state to contemplate the art. To try online guided contemplation of art, follow me on YouTube or Instagram at AG Art Advisory and check out my website to see how I can work with you, your clientele, or your community. Thanks for watching.